and welcome to the Trade Finance Distribution Initiative podcast. This is where we explore the latest trends, innovations, and insights in the trade finance ecosystem. I'm your host, Doris Kononovich, and today I have with me Amparo Garcia Flores. She's the general manager of Securitize Europe, a pioneering platform that enables fully digital securities issuance, offering a fast and transparent way to raise capital and provide investors with access to alternative investment opportunities. Now, we'll be diving into a key topic that will be discussed at the upcoming Trade Finance Investor Day, where Amparo, XZC Foundation's Billy Sebel, and myself will be a part of a panel discussing tokenizing real-world assets. Welcome, Amparo. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Doris. You know, I get quite excited when there's another woman going to be joining the stage because I, I always say that we don't have enough women in trade finance. It's really yeah, agree. exciting to have you. <laughs> All right, um, let's dive in. Now, Securitize is known for its groundbreaking role uh, in digital securities. And it's always very exciting for me uh, to, to learn about industry pioneers. So for those who may not be really familiar with what you do, can you explain how your platform enables issuers to raise capital and how this process benefits investors? Okay, so we are an end-to-end platform that does the full life cycle of digital securities. So we enable what is the real digitization of the securities. Therefore, we do the tokenization, then we do the issuance of new shares, debt, um, funds, whatever we want within digital uh, securities, and we trade them and we manage them throughout their whole life uh, cycle. We work with, uh, with our investors and issuers firstly in the USA. That's where we started our operations back in 2017. And uh, in the near future, we will also be launching our activities in the European Union. That way, we will be able to offer those same services in uh, in Europe and in the USA. To do that, we've got three licenses in the USA that we will replicate in Europe. These licenses are a transfer agent license, a broker dealer license, and an APS license. We are over 150 people uh, throughout the world. And, uh, and we are definitely the, the experts in this, as we have been the first ones in doing many of the uh, most bespoken uh, instances in the, uh, in the last uh, months. This is an exciting um, place to be, I think, because there's a big expansion into this market. And on the Trade Finance Investor Day, you'll be talking about tokenizing real world assets. Can you share the preview of what this means, like really in the context of trade finance and why this is such a game changer for this industry particularly? Well, in, in, in any case, the tokenization is really the what I was saying first, which is the digitization but a real digitization. And this brings together uh, many of many benefits, uh, starting with the fragmentation of ownership and because of that, democratization of the industry. So capital markets uh, are more accessible, not only for in, uh, institutional investors, but also uh, for professional and retail investors. That's the, fa- the main benefit for me of the tokenization of real world assets. And the second one is the one related to the technology, which is the traceability and the usage of the smart contracts that automates the full processes. That brings together with the democratization, the efficiency and the liquidity to the system, creating new sources of funds and therefore new ways of expanding this uh, this industry. We can use the digital securities in ways that we couldn't use them uh, when they were real uh, assets in the traditional world. So we can do things like uh, creating lions, using them as collateralization. And that way we are providing further profitability at a very low risk. And that's for me the main benefit of of uh, of this new world, that it has the benefits it has the reality of the traditional world, but it also includes new benefits that enhance and makes this industry a bit further. Uh, let's case study the work that you're doing with the XEC network now and the role of yield tech in all of this. How do partnership, partnerships such as these um, enhance that process of tokenizing assets and how does the Securitize collaborate with these bodies? So for, uh, for, we do not work, although we are a full platform and we and we create uh, the full life, sa- life cycle, 
all our assets are put into a network and that network is not ours. So we work with blockchains that are already relevant in the market. We work with Polygon, we work with Avalanche and the latest that we have included is XTC. And this is an amazing opportunity for us uh, being in that in that in a, uh, atmosphere because uh, we are using a network that is very, very efficient and therefore that we believe that it will have a huge uh, growth in the uh, in the forthcoming uh, months and uh, for us putting relying on, on on this network gives us the security that the, the uh, that the tokens that we are issuing and the tokens that we are uh, transfer aging are going to be in the best environment for the investors and the issuers to be trading i suppose one of the big uh, questions for anyone in the room would be compliance, you know, and, and regulatory changes. Um, how are you ensuring that this is met up at real time today with all the compliance rules? Digital securities, they offer clearly a greater transparency and, and efficiency compared to these traditional systems. So how do securitize address the regulatory concerns and investor protections, particularly when it comes to real world asset tokenization? So we work with digital securities. And digital securities are, before anything else, securities. So we need to comply with the same rules and the same requirements that traditional securities have. So we need to comply with MIFID, we need to comply with GAFI uh, restrictions, we need to comply with the same rules and the same restrictions that traditional securities have. Because of that, we do the full KYC of the investors and the issuers we include within our platform. And we do not only the analysis of those people, but also of the wallets they bring into the, uh, into the platform. So we do the full analysis of both the, the people who are interacting in our platform and also the, in the elements they use for that interaction. And we do that firstly before going into the platform and we also do it on an ongoing basis so that we have uh, a day-to-day -day, uh, knowledge of where these uh, where these people stand so we uh, we do the, uh, the the full kyc appropriateness test if needed we do the suitability test uh, and and after that we do the whitelisting of the uh, of the wallets and monitor all these activities uh, in the uh, in the activity in the daily activity of our investors and our issuers for those who find that this is still an unknown frontier, because uh, this is generally quite new for a lot of institutional investors and fund managers, um, for the those who are attending the Investor Day, how should they start thinking about integrating these assets into their portfolios and why? I mean, this is this is exactly the same way when uh, when back in the uh, in the twenty in in the nineties, sorry, uh, the traditional uh, physical. Uh, uh, securities change into book entry form. That's the main difference. Uh, and, and, and the securities remain the same. So we still have the same securities and they are as secure as they as they used to be. And at that point in time, people didn't mind whether they were on, on the internet or whether they were in a specific server or they were in the physical title. So this is another revolution in that sense. Uh, the, the securities are exactly the same. And therefore, the people who are used to working with uh, securities shouldn't be scared about uh, using digital securities because they've got exactly the same kind of security. Having said that, uh, the, main, the main benefit of this is that we can do it in a more efficient way. And, and, and what I would recommend these people is to start exploring this because this new technology is here to stay. And, uh, and if they start using it in very small uh, portfolios, using very liquid uh, assets and using uh, activities in which they do not see much risk, there shouldn't be a problem. One of these examples is, is the uh, USDTY, which is the product that we, uh, we launched uh, with, with XD, XDC and Trade Tech. Uh, this is a very good example of a good uh, security that can be uh, in any portfolio of any investor because it is an investment in, in an ETF and therefore with very low risk because you've got the, um, the stability of the US dollar and at the same time you've got the benefits of being in a cryptocurrency and because of that you can put it in a, in a liquidity pool and get further profitability 
to what uh, uh, vis a vis what you had in the uh, in the very beginning. That way, you can have a very low risk and with good uh, profitability, security, and, uh, and and it's a good way of starting the uh, the introduction into digital securities. Uh- for me, I, I'm thinking now, what are the challenges here? You know, uh, the digital world can improve efficiency. You can scale more. You can, you know, think about this can revolutionize how, you know, entirely how SMEs are funded, except, you know, looking at the longer term. But for you, what are the challenges when it comes to uh, tokenizing trade finance assets and, and how does Secretaries help overcome these barriers? For me, the, there are two main uh, barriers. The first one is the regulatory one. Again, being uh, being a security, we need to comply with all the regulations and the kind of products we can use within uh, this technology, especially, for example, in, in Europe, are limited vis-a-vis the traditional securities in the uh, in the short term. And, and we need to have the full framework working uh, to have it exploit in its, uh, in its capacity, in its full capacity. And the second one, which is the uh, the most the uh, the short term one, is the change management because the usability here, being a new technology, is not the best one yet. Uh, and for me, the uh, going into this world uh, just by going into DeFi, for example, without going through a partner like us who has uh, made this easier and made it. Uh, and, and, and created a front end in which you can interact in the same way you would uh, work in your online banking or with your uh, brokerage page or whatever like that uh, without needing to deal with the nitty gritty and the specificities of the uh, of, of the uh, digital uh, uh, securities and the blockchains. Things like how to create a wallet, how to uh, align that wallet and, and use it in a way that you are the custodian of, of the wallet and have the uh, the proper uh, the ownership of the private key and 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 and, change, and keeping that within your mind and things like that are the ones that are making this uh, less uh, operating or, or or less easy for people who are used to working in a very easy environment with uh, with a very nice front end. Uh, but if you take that out of the equation. There's really, really no barrier within this technology. It's the future in the next 10 to 15 years, I'm telling you. I was going to ask you about uh, the geopolitical minefields of uh, regulatory changes across different regions, but I think we're running out of time and I'll leave that for our panel for the invest today for anyone who's watching and wondering what the answer to that will be. Uh, a cheeky last question for those who are uh, going to be attending the Trade Finance Invest Day, what can they expect from your participation and why should anybody really be interested in the future of trade finance, make it a priority to attend and listen to you speak on that day? Because it's going to be a very practical uh, environment in which we will be able to uh, go into the nitty gritty and speak very loudly on the different uh, bits and pieces. And it's an um, it's a secure environment in which you can ask whatever you want and uh, and learn uh, in experience about the product that we are offering and about the solutions that we are uh, rendering for uh, for them to be investing in the in the very short future. Absolutely. I am absolutely looking forward to um, hosting you and being there in the day uh, with you. Definitely one panel that should not be mixed, missed. And I'm not just saying that because we'll all be there. But thank you so much, uh, Ampara, for making time to be here today. Pleasure. My pleasure. See you soon. See you soon. And, you know, for, that wraps up today's episode on the Trade Finance Distribution Initiative podcast. Time is now running out to register. If you haven't, you better be there. Um, register at the tradefinancedistribution.com to get your tickets. And I will be seeing you there. I'm your host, Doris Kuninovich. Till next time, take care.